The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Um, why? Oh, I'm missing something here. I found it. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, it's over. That one sounded like it just, the machine was almost broke when it played it. Anyway, we're up uh, 12 on the S&P cash. The Dow's up uh, 165. The Nasdaq's off 15 points. And, of course, uh, it had a fairly big sell-off in the Nasdaq right after the open. Uh, my guess, though, is that there's a good chance that we're seeing a bottom put in. Uh, the uh, semis probably through the end of the year doesn't mean that they're instantly going to race higher. We'll talk about that uh, as the show goes on. Uh, maybe the rest of the market, too. Um, you know, you get a few of these kind of uh, washouts uh, in early December, and then the market tends to kind of go flat. And you see the short squeezes start rolling through the end of the year. Uh, what else do we have? Of course, uh, Friday, we had kind of a double barrel shotgun. We'll talk about uh, that uh, of uh, news and the implications of it in news. But uh, at this time, there's nothing to expect, but probably slightly higher prices into the end of the year. Uh, some squeezes on highly overshorted stocks. So if anything's been being beat up lately, uh, keep a very close eye on it. These things can rip. I'm looking at NVIDIA and some of these others. Probably won't be playing it, uh, but do think that uh, some of the uh, amounts of shorts we saw uh, Thursday, Friday, and my, my guess is we're going to see them again today. But uh, you see NVIDIA close back up above 190. My guess is that's going to drift up uh, to 200 or maybe 204. Uh, by Christmas time, uh, we're going to see some of these others. There's just not a lot of juice, not a lot of reasons. If you haven't sold now, are you going to sell? And the answer is generally no. So you you get you know we what we're on the fourth, so we don't really have that much longer to go. Uh, my guess is that we're going to start vol uh, see volume shrinking uh, starting on Wednesday with the Fed announcement. Uh, that, of course, is also the uh, day that options market makers go delta neutral. And so that's probably going to be the last big hurrah. So we got a couple of days until then. Uh, from then on, fairly distinct lower volumes each day throughout the rest of the year. You can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the Tiger's Den for us here. Uh, and uh, as always, we like to get started with a little bit of history. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. After a year of brutal backcountry conflict between Washington and his fierce British commander, Lieutenant uh, Bannistry Tarleton, uh, who is infamous for Tarleton's quarter, the murder of colonial POWs. And this uh, Washington I'm speaking of is a uh, relative, I think a cousin once removed or twice removed, of actual George Washington. Um, anyway, uh, retreated to North Carolina the previous October. The commander returned to South Carolina theater by Bri uh, Brigadier General Daniel, the old Wagoners Morgan Colonel Washington, still lacked the proper artillery, uh, oh, I can't even speak today, artillery to dislodge the loyalist, i.e. Uh, the uh, people from uh, England. Uh, he told his cavalry men to dismount and surround the barn, and uh, what he did was take a pine log, cut it up, paint it black, put it in the back of a cart, and kind of aim it at the barn, 
and uh, a none the wiser bunch of uh, people from the uh, great uh, country of the uh, of Britain decided to give up, other than being pummeled by a log that was supposed to be a uh, a gun. And if you ever watch the movie, uh, God, what's the name of it? Not the Rebel. Ah, now I'm having a memory blank today. It was the one about the uh, uh, 1776. You had the guy with all the sons and everything. Uh, Mad Max starred in it. We'll think of it. Uh, anyway, there was a kind of the evil character was uh, all based on this Tarlington. Uh, but uh, on this day in uh, 1870, they smoked out a bunch of British with a pine log painted black and put in a cart. And uh, eh, who says that uh, the colonialists didn't have a brain back then? Well, not me. Not Thunderdome. That was a movie. But it had nothing to do with the so uh, with the uh, War of Independence. But it's the same guy that's in it. How can I? Why can't I think of his name? Don't worry, I'll think of it eventually. Someone will say. Someone will email it to me here in, in a minute. You always wonder it. But uh, on this day in uh, 1780, eh, interesting stuff. Um, the antitrust movement's uh, moving a little bit faster now. Uh, a startup called VidMe, which is a competitor to YouTube, shut down. Uh, it will be uh, all shut down by December 15th. Uh, it was going up against Google. It says it has, uh, and Facebook, and says it has no ability to compete with those folks. Uh, a lot of people are looking in Silicon Valley at the big hand of the government uh, coming in as nobody can compete with these big monoliths. Uh, but another log on the fire of a lot of antitrust talk. Mel Gibson, thank you. Now, what was the name of the movie? The Patriot is what I want to say. Anyway. That was the movie that that was about somewhat. But all his stunts in the movie were all based on that guy that basically got them to give up by pointing at pine log painted black at them. Um, of course, uh, Friday was very interesting. Uh, fake news cost billions uh, for Brian Ross of ABC, who came out with a extremely dubious uh, news article during the day. Uh, ABC continued to backpedal all the way into Saturday. First, it was a correction. Then it was uh, a lot of me culpas. They went through about four or five different levels of saying that uh, Brian Ross lied about the story. He didn't get a second source, and he didn't pass it through uh, the checks uh, for his boss to actually talk to his source and make sure that they actually said what's there. Um, I know... Most people probably heard about this, but since I watched TV off and on throughout the weekend, I didn't see anything on the major news networks about this. I thought maybe this may have slipped under the radar for a few people. If it had not, even then, um, it had cost billions. There's a bunch of lawsuits that will be probably coming out of this. Uh, you will see from your broker, no doubt, a ability to join a uh, class action. I think uh, if this, uh, I, I pretty much ignore them, but one, this one actually may raise a couple hundred bucks for you one day, and of course, uh, might get them to quit writing uh, fake news during the trading day. We'll be back after this. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And uh, since a lot of my operations into the end of the year are all going to be about short squeezes, I've added a new feature that will continue on after the first of the year to the daily newsletter, which is the short sales percentages for uh, the highest shorted stocks in the S&P 500 and in the NASDAQ 100. Um, I've also included the last uh, four days besides the last day. Uh, and uh, we can just go through these quickly, but uh, if you're looking for stocks that could have a huge uh, turn the other way, T. Rowe Price, Under Armour, Haynes Brand, Seagate, Mohawk Industry, Henry Schein, Centerpoint Energy, American Waterworks, Macy's. Uh, I have Under, Under Armour in here twice for some reason. Chesapeake Energy, Cummings. Uh, Conchito Resources, BB&T, Automatic Data Processing, C-Trip, Tesla Motors, uh, Seagate, Henry Shines, Bio, Marin Pharma, uh, ADP, Hasbro, Myland, Ulta, Salon, and Semantic uh, run those out. And again, it's kind of nice to know when you've got uh, consistent high volumes of shorting each day. And of course, these numbers... Uh, basically see how many people initiated a short position that day. Doesn't mean that they went home with it. Just means that at one point someone shorted the stock. Uh, Tesla, as I say, is a perennial high short stock. If you look through the uh, Friday, 25% of the shares or one out of every four was initiated with a short sale position. Uh, the days before that, 29%. 26%, 28%, 28%. So you kind of get an idea whether or not that's uh, something that's normal in the stock or if they started piling on like T. Rowe Price, uh, where it, it was 8, 10, 13%, Friday, 25%. Um, and again, these uh, sudden huge short uh, sale numbers uh, have a pretty high correlation to a bottom coming in the next 24 hours of trading. 
it seems like uh, the people who like to short can't get enough of uh, shorting when the stock hits the bottom. And uh, I guess the other thought is that it's the pros shorting it in the morning and covering by the afternoon. But for whatever reason, uh, big short numbers tend to be places where eh, the market probably gets too short. So if you see a huge bounce in these, uh, it's always good to pause and reflect and take a deep look at the charts themselves and take it out uh, and keep an eye on it. That's why I'm kind of not thinking that there's a whole lot to uh, Tesla's downside uh, between now and the end of the year. Uh, you always look for when that actually starts dropping. And uh, that's a good sign that shorts have quit shorting. And uh, maybe it's bounced enough to get a few of those guys off its back. And the next leg down in the big ABC that's coming will continue. But uh, a new feature in the uh, newsletter each day. Um, wanted to look at Barrett Gold. Uh, posted a message in the den uh, during Steve Rhodes' show uh, about his comments on gold. I was just going to say that actually Barrett Gold uh, doesn't look that bad out here, and I'm not a big fan of gold. Don't spend a lot of time at it, but I did see this uh, nice chart pop up in the scans. You have a little gap. That gap goes back to uh, was it uh, April 5th of 2016. I uh, went back and tested it on 37.3 million shares on December 15th of 2016. Uh, and, of course, uh, a little less than 20 million shares here just recently. Uh, you got a little bounce out here and a little hammer. Doesn't mean uh, that's the uh, bottom for all these. You might get one more test of the low. Ideally, you'd like to see three or four or more of these gold stocks start showing some support, finding some support or bouncing off of it, uh, and joining its friends like Barrett Gold, showing that maybe a bottom is in. The volume did increase on November 30th and on the uh, 1st. So, it is, you know, you had some kind of light volume as it went sideways. A few pushes, not enough to get it back down. A little pop up here today, but it doesn't have a lot of juice either. You may get one more stab at it. Again, I would think you'd want to see two or three more gold stocks out here give some signals, uh, especially with the Fed coming on Wednesday. That may put together kind of a little list. We also have uh, Bitcoin futures coming out. Um, people might get their hands burnt fairly quick trading Bitcoin and decide to go back to gold. So uh, I, I think maybe you've got the next three, four, five days out here uh, to keep a very close eye on gold. And you might find some nice setups. So what uh, else do we have going on out here? Wanted to look at a few other stocks. Oh, wanted to say uh, NVIDIA. Looks like uh, it may have bottom. We're looking for confirmation for this one to close back over 190 today. And I think that would be a fairly good indication that this thing has hit its low. Uh, you're really looking, or at least I'm looking at the September 18th through 19th and 20th days where there was kind of a little triple uh, reversal back here. And this is like one... Is a one uh, the high is 189.42. You'd like it to close back above that 189.42 to indicate that Nvidia is pretty much its blow off top out here had uh, pretty much given it up. You got a nice deep signal to 184.50. The note guarantee today, but if this did close at 189.50, 190 and above, uh, it does look like you might have the ability out here to uh, get something. Uh, again, we're probably unwinding the huge uh, rollover from the NASDAQ into the S&P. Uh, my guess is that the push in the S&P may have set uh, the high in the S&P for a few days. And then, of course, um, the NASDAQ lows out here uh, might be the set, maybe the low out here today. We're off 31 on the NASDAQ, uh, off eight on, or up eight on the S&P, and up 158 on the Dow. And uh, this is gonna be a time where we probably don't keep all our bounces and we don't give, uh, don't keep all our uh, uh, sell-offs throughout the day. We're probably going to drift around more about untapped. So I'll be looking at uh, very certain sectors and more likely uh, individual stocks themselves to 
be more interested in. Uh, again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Look at a few other stocks out here. Uh, is that one? Yep, yeah, there's some lists of ones. Let's go ahead and take a look at the XLV, which is the healthcare sector. Uh, some big news in that one today. Let's uh, get this one down. Um, was wondering how this thing was going to approach the $84.30 high of October 23rd. One of the reasons why is in the very late uh, hours of Friday night, Monday morning, uh, when they finally voted on the tax bill, one of the things that was interesting uh, is that the ACA was, un, uh, was defunded, uh, pretty much putting an end to that program. Uh, it hasn't been talked about very much mostly because it's going to be handled in rec uh, reconciliation uh, between the House and the Senate. Uh, but uh, we're probably about a week or 10 days away from that. It's down on very light volume so far, just uh, 4 million shares compared to 15 million shares on Friday and even almost 11 million shares on Thursday. Um, so we'll see. Kind of hard. I think a lot of people are still wondering what this is going to be for healthcare stocks. But we'll be back in that. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And some other questions coming in about uh, why I think semis are probably close uh, to a bottom, if not a bottom today. Uh, looking at uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, uh, you had, of course, a huge volume day down on the 29th. 
11.7 uh, million shares, uh, 9 million shares the next day, 7 million shares the next day. Today, about 5 million shares so far. Uh, couldn't get into that uh, low of $39 from Friday's low, too. Uh, and again, we've gone through the sector rotation. Sector rotations don't last for months. They generally, when the street gets ready to do something, they go ahead and do it. Uh, of course, today is going to be the last day of fund buying, uh, too. And my guess is that we're probably going to see a few of these stocks that were sold by a lot of the traditional uh, blue chip, uh, old industrial S&P stocks. That whole thing of selling uh, to get out of them is probably over today. So if we start seeing a lot more weakness, I'll take a look at it. But my thought is, at least right now, uh, that uh, we might see a lot of or a little bit more buying as we go into the close today. And we don't need to uh, actually close much higher uh, than these levels to put in a low for Christmas. And now, January, complete different story. But right now, uh, it's kind of easy to think about uh, looking at a market that, uh, while nervous uh, on just about every time scale, is probably going to uh, just uh, kind of quietly wind down through the rest of the year. Uh, to, to what do we have? Lumber liquidators. Uh, this one, uh, if you think the housing market is going to do well, made a fairly decent signal, came in, uh, filled half of the gap from, uh, what is that, uh, August 1st, when this thing popped up on earnings with 12.6 million shares. Uh, this one, very light volume, 800,000 shares into that 12 million shares. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that the selling back into this one is fairly light. Um, will you get one more opportunity? I think you will. But uh, probably not worth 41 bucks, but uh, hey, maybe worth 26 and a half uh, for a run back up to 34 in the near future. Uh, Booz uh, Hamilton, the people that brought you uh, the uh, huge WikiLeaks uh, draft with uh, uh, all its trimmings several years ago to expose uh, the nefarious deeds of the NSA, uh, is bouncing around back up at this resistance level when it fell apart on earnings. Uh, it had to pay off a lot of cash. Uh, for all the misdeeds of its employees. This did gap down on, what is that, uh, June 16th with uh, 12.4 million shares. It's gotten into it with a little less than 2 million shares on October 16th, uh, with 2.3 million shares on October 7th, and uh, today with 500,000 shares. So if there's some stocks topping out here, there, there's a handful of them that are pretty much uh, doing that with uh, light volume. Okay. Uh, Blackberry, let's go back a little bit farther on this one. And let me check my mail. Uh, uh, okay. Um, Blackberry is just retesting $36, or what, uh, $11.74 from June 1st. That had 36 million shares. You got about 26 in here. Again, super high short interest in these uh, means that they can hold up all the way through Christmas now. Uh, I don't expect a lot more up here, but uh, if you get a little pullback, a little bit more. But uh, probably the last year for BlackBerry, my guess is that these guys roll over next year. Uh, question from Minnesota. Uh, asked me to take a look at Overstock. Uh, this uh, stock uh, ran on news that it was suddenly a Bitcoin stock. Uh, anytime a company changes its uh, main purpose and attaches itself to whatever is hot lately, uh, there were a lot of companies that uh, suddenly became social media stocks a few years ago. Uh, my first introduction was uh, somewhere around 2000, 2001, when all these uh, companies suddenly changed their name to something with gold in it uh, that had nothing to do with gold. And that's why I would probably, even with a high short interest in overstock, say that this one is extremely suspect. Uh, 
uh, suddenly they went from what they were doing to now we're taking Bitcoins and doing Bitcoin stuff, and that's going to make all the difference in the world. Uh, I'm not buying it. Uh, and, of course, as we said, futures uh, this weekend and uh, over the next few weeks, uh, more than one outlet for buying futures in Bitcoin. I think that a lot of people are going to look at that as a much better way to play it than a rather dubious adventure in a company changing its path. And I don't see a lot of reason why Overstock should do that well. Again, just a lot of these companies, it's easier to say, hey, we're a social media company. Oh, no, 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 no. We're a Bitcoin company. No, 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 no. Whatever's hot, that is always a big sign that there's probably a problem with the underlying business of the company. I would personally stay away from overstock if you're interested in, in other Bitcoin plays. There may be better ones out there. Does it bottom around here? Yes, probably. Is there any reason to buy this thing? Yeah, I think everybody's already figured out that that story is a little dubious. So I would stay away from it. Uh, does it look uh, okay on the chart? Eh, marginal at best. Uh, what you really have to, what I really dislike is the energy off the no uh, November 27th high down to the low of uh, Friday uh, was 7.2 on my power law vector indicator and just 5.7 on the way up from the November 7th low to the November 27th high. So went up on fairly light energy, came down on heavy energy. Uh, is support around in here? Yes. Uh, but again, I can think of a lot of other stocks that are truly doing things with uh, blockchains and Bitcoin that will probably change the way their business is run and their profits and bottom line. I uh, don't think this one is one of those. Two, two, two. Let's see what else is out here. Hormel. Wanted to see how this one did besides uh, wanting to talk about spam. Uh, wonderful spam. Uh, actually, up to its previous high with more volume today, $37.80 for HRL. Uh, that was 3.16 million shares on that February 16th high. And we went above it today. Looks like we're going to hold, uh, well, not above it. We're 15 cents shy of that high. But certainly you already have, well, you got 2 million shares now going into 3 million. So you certainly have the ability to get into that 3 million share high. It's filled its gap. Uh, Hormel Foods, not kind of a get-rich scheme. So uh, might be very interesting to watch. It's kind of late to buy this one. But uh, it has made it through the gap. If it goes higher and then pulls back to something like 36.75 on light volume, that may be a good uh, opportunity if you want to get one of these safety stocks for the beginning of the year. We'll be back. We'll look at Murphy's Oil and a few others. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. 
And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank. Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the TAS Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the TAS Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Up six on the S&P, Dow's still up 143, NASDAQ off 38. And again, I suspect what we're seeing here is the first day where this rotation is probably being wound back down, uh, that uh, we've got fund buying that's over, and we're going to see these markets come back and converge and then slightly head higher through Christmas. Uh, we've got uh, just a couple more days to get through the Fed, and for the most part, the news is over. Got a handful of earnings in the next couple of days, but nothing that's going to be that exciting. Uh, AutoZone in the morning, a handful tomorrow night, but uh, nothing that I think is going to move the market. Uh, anyway, uh, looked at a lot of stocks, think that uh, we've got a good opportunity probably for at least some of the semis, some of the other things out here to find a bottom maybe yet today or tomorrow, next couple of days, but they're probably fairly close. So we'll keep a look on that. Murphy, uh, we'll look at uh, commodity prices, of course, and uh, oil uh, off uh, 92 cents at 57.44. Uh, interesting to see Murphy USA, uh, August 3rd, $79.79 with 1.4 million shares. Spiked through that today with 161,000 shares. So some of these stocks that kind of went up on dubious light volume look to me the weakest. Uh, it's moved from September, from November 7th at $70.24 up to this 81.28 today has been on very light energy. Um, and I think, like I said, a lot of that rotation is going to start coming out on some of these in the next few days, maybe a little bit overworn. Skechers uh, had a nice pop on earnings back on the 20th of October. It is now, uh, let's see, uh, 34.87, the October 23rd high. It's gone through. It hadn't gone through it with any kind of volume. Uh, you've got 10, uh, let's call it 11 million shares on that October 23rd high. Uh, Friday, 2.4 million shares, 1.85 million shares today, making a little tick. This one, to me, would be on my list if I was thinking short. Uh, this one probably back down to the 2750 mark would be not too bad. 36, 39. It's just uh, tennis shoes kind of got oversold, uh, way over shorted, and then these things bounced. I don't think that anything's changed. May not go back down to the previous low of 2390, but uh, interesting nonetheless. SPG, which is Simon Property Group. Uh, talk about some big uh, swings out here, a little higher lows, a little uh, lower highs. Um, these are going to be very interesting coming after Christmas. I don't see anything in that one today, but it's interesting. SQM, Chili Miners, wanted to see how this one was doing. Um, actually, on a chart basis, doesn't look all that bad. 
5250 was the September 25 uh, 25th low with uh, 3.2 million shares got into it with half that 1.5 uh, million shares at 5131 so you went uh, a little over a buck underneath it closed back above it today you kind of rolling down again on 719,000 shares um, I was very dubious at this one at the highs when everybody was yelling and screaming about a shortage of uh, cobalt this has kind of come back down. I think the uh, big lie of the cobalt shortage forever, probably over for a little while anyway. Uh, these rumors tend to come back in waves. So that wave is probably not over. But uh, he had a very light test of the previous high. Did so, uh, what, uh, September 20th had uh, 5.3 million shares at 6380. Got to 63.32, but you couldn't even manage 50% of the volume. This rolled back over. But uh, $50.50 looks like that support level from September 25th. And you might get a, yet another opportunity if this thing faces out around there. I wouldn't be buying that today, but it does look interesting. Uh, when we look at the dollar index today, uh, up 33 cents. So still in this lower part of that trading range. But uh, certainly looks like you might be able to find that heading back up. Uh, into the 95 range through the end of Christmas. I think uh, especially with the Brexit not getting any kind of deal today, uh, they're probably going to continue arguing, and that's probably going to be able to put at least a little floor under the dollar, if not a little bit of juice into it going into the end of the year. So uh, we've got plenty of time here left. Let me check my emails again. Okay. Uh, to, 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 to. Got a few emails here. Uh, was IBM one of the ones I was talking about with uh, the blockchain? And the answer is yes. Uh, I don't know if I would buy uh, IBM because I think it's just in a trading range. But yes, they're one of the few companies out here that spent a lot of money getting Bitcoin to run fairly fast on their computer system. Again, some of these other ones, uh, especially like Ethereum, are based uh, I want to say it's on the Merkel, not the Merkel we're thinking of uh, in Germany. Uh, it's a thing called Merkel trees, M-E-R-K-L-E -E, trees. Yeah, there it is. Uh, and I will pop this up for you. A Merkel tree uh, is kind of like a uh, linked list if you're into computers, kind of like a database if you're not. Uh, it makes it easy to go and find individual parts of the transactions instead of having to download the entire transaction every time uh, the uh, tables change for everything, which is the way Bitcoin works, which makes it kind of slow. And the longer that you have Bitcoin, the more that you have to download because basically you're downloading every transaction ever uh, in these things. So you've got to know uh, where to go for them. Uh, but uh, these Merkle trees are part of Ethereum. My guess is this is going to be part of the rest of blockchains in the future. Uh, it just allows you to get to those individual parts of that. But uh, you need to know about Merkle trees if you're getting into Ethereum, at least somewhat. Uh, IBM, of course, made their system work with Bitcoin, and they just decided to use a lot of effort and a lot of big machines to make it work. And, of course, there's always the thing, well, we'll just get a bigger engine. And that's kind of where IBM is in this. And for, this, uh, for at least some of these folks that are getting into that business, uh, let's say uh, people like uh, the CME and uh, uh, the CBOE and other people doing futures, uh, my guess is that they're buying those machines from IBM. The question is, you know, is there enough business uh, in a couple of uh, futures brokers and markets to actually make IBM go higher, they got to sell a lot of units, and that becomes problematic. Uh, uh, what are you talking about? Merkle tree? One of the guys commenting in the den. Yeah, I think that was like a computer science thing from forever ago. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of stuff in that, but. Uh, Okay, uh, STM. Let's take a look at the next stock. Uh, do we have enough time? We're going to get close. Want to get this in uh, STM Microelectronics. Uh, one of the reasons why I thought that 
at least we're probably fairly close to uh, a uh, low in some of these uh, uh, semi stocks is the way that STM did it gapped up on the 26th of October did so on 9.2 million shares got into it on Friday with 6.6 6 million shares uh, did about halfway through the gap which I like you get a little bit of back today but you're really going to need to see some force by the end of the day these semis if they're going to break we'll be back in a minute Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Come join me next hour as we bisect and dissect these markets right here on TFNN. Wow! Again, we're going to have some earnings starting tomorrow morning. Uh, AutoZone in the morning, handful of stocks after the bell tomorrow night. We'll talk about those tomorrow. But uh, the only thing really of note out here for earnings today was GW Pharma. Uh, this is the only company that owns, uh, holds a license to make bills uh, from THC and marijuana. Um, came out, they were kind of about uh, 122 or something when I was watching them. Uh, spiked up uh, earlier in the day then kind of rotated back out. The one thing that uh, is the constant out here is fairly light volume. This did gap up on fairly decent news on the uh, 21st of November with uh, 1.4 million shares. Uh, you're just down on 500,000 shares. So if you were looking for some kind of ABC to start forming, uh, you might get a little bit more out here, but uh, 116, 115 is the finish and the break. Maybe this thing starts again uh, in the new year. But uh, generally, if you already started heading down now with some strength, it's uh, problematic to get a lot of people start buying you, uh, buying this. But uh, 
if this thing would just go sideways, uh, this would be an interesting to keep an eye on for January 2nd, as we're almost getting to the end of the year. But, uh, yeah. Maybe this thing changes in a day or two. Everybody's kind of a little spooked mood out here. Up six on the S&P. Dow's still up 145. NASDAQ's off 42. Uh, and again, I suspect that the unwinding and the change is pretty much done between the NASDAQ uh, today uh, of them getting out and moving to uh, the older, stodgier companies in the S&P and in the Dow. So now what are we going to do? We're probably going to go sideways for a couple of days into the uh, FOMC meeting. Uh, that doesn't really mean a lot because, of course, we get all well, a handful of brand new people, including the chair of the Fed in February. But we're going to get a rate hike. Uh, everybody knows it's coming, so that's not any kind of new news. Uh, we want to just watch how a few of these semis close today. Watch NVIDIA over 189.50. Watch uh, some of these other ones out here. These things could be uh, basing out and a lot of short interest in these things in, the next, uh, in these right now. So they could have a nice uh, corrections, one or two day corrections up here in the next few days. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.